I've only set it to 50 on the nozzle and 40 on the heat bed just as a, just to show you that you will see it switched on there on the nozzle. It's the second one. Get myself a bit more comfortable and stood in an awkward position here. And after a bit the bed will also switch on to regulate the temperature. Notice that the fan has a different image and the heat rising from the bed has a different image and obviously the proto maker on the left hand side. That's all in the status window which is the top part which I'm going to talk about changing and how to set that up. The heat bed has quite some mass so it does take a bit of time. It's probably near the temperature of its normal thingy at the moment. Actually it's a bit hotter here. It's happening with the Seems like it's gone brighter this camera for some reason. I think you can see that. Anyway, there will be a gap sort of in the line there when it falls down below temperature. I'll just turn the... This does need... This probably will uh, get a bit of modification. I mean a bit of editing. Just a second, I just want to show you the fan speed. So as you can see the fan speed there, I've set it to 85 because it is pulse width. 255, I think that's right, is uh, for 100%. So you have to calculate a bit. The fan probably won't run under about 30% anyway. Well not start up under that speed because it does take a little bit of torque to try and get the start. Now it is possible to even animate this fan to a certain extent on the image. I don't know how to do that at this moment. I know somebody has done it. I'll put a link about that on well in the description. There we are, there's a bit of a gap in it there. And it's straight away it came back on. Okay. Now it might be also possible to animate some of the other images a bit and obviously change the images if you wish. It's, so far as I know it's just this top section up here that you can change. Now you have to watch for the numbers because they are placed in a certain position. So I think you can also define which positions those are in. Maybe just watch this a few more seconds. Okay, let's go on the computer and we'll have a look at setting this status. This is a status. I'll just show you the boot screen. Let's let me press reset and you watch it booting up. So that's a boot screen. That's different to the status screen. And then we have the status screen. The status screen is like the status as it's progressing. Now there is also talk about removing X and Y when it's printing to give some more real estate on here and various other things in Marlin. I'm using, I'm not sure, well you might have seen it there when I booted up uh, the version of Marlin I'm using. Okay, let's get on the computer. Right, first of all I would suggest that you go into your Marlin folder Download, isn't it? So I keep mine. And then go to example configurations. Reality is quite a good one. CR10 will do. And you see you've got status underscore status screen here. Open this in 
a text editor. I'm using, I don't like Notepad, see what Notepad does to it. I normally use uh, Pilot Edit. Put some details about Pilot Edit on here. And see how better formatting Pilot Edit is. So, first of all, I would say save this as and save it into your Marlon folder. I already have mine. Well, I would save there into the Marlon folder. That's to give you a starter. Now, basically, these two blocks of code want editing. Let me put this in a smaller font and you'll probably be able to figure out. Uh, and set this font to three. Three's a good one. And see, you can get an idea what it looks like. So it's got three Ds, got the hot end here, it's got the bed here, and the fan here. And so far as I know, I could be wrong that both files are basically the same. I don't know why it has two files, it might be to do with animation between one and the other. I'm only in a way of learning this myself, so let's set up all back to somewhere sensible. So this is pilot edit I'm using, very good. See how it I like setting text there. Now we want an image file. To be working on. Well, that's not mine, but well, it is one of mine. Yeah, this is the one I want. You see how small the image file is here. I mean, I can make it bigger, basically. Well, basically, edit this image file. This image file, I'll show you the settings of this image file. You only can do only mono, so black and white basically, or like blue, cyan, and dark blue in this case, or you might have a green monitor. 1 to 8 by 19, that's the settings I'm using. You might get actually a few more pixels on that 19. And set to two colors, only two uh, thingies. Let me put this, make sure you've got this 1 to 1. Where can I, where am I? There we are, one to one, so you see how small it is. Now, that's still open. Let me go to this website, Marlon website. Go to Marlon FW, I think that's firmware.org, Marlon FW.org. Click on tools, go to bitmap converter. Now oh, this is still open in the paint package, which I'm using paint shop pro version six. It's a very old version. Basically, I'm going to copy that into the clipboard. I'm not going to save it as a file. I'm going to copy, well, you can save it as a file, as a backup if you want. But basically I'm copying it into a clipboard. And then I'm going to go in this box and select paste. Paste. And then you can see that the file is there. And it's got all the codes you want. I would suggest to use binary. We can do certain things like change it light to dark. That seems to do, uh, I think that does an inverse. I think that does the same as the inverse. Binary ASCII art, if you want ASCII, ASCII art can be quite helpful. It puts ASCII after the code. Select status there. Now you can justify the image right. Overlay bed image, but it's going to have the bed image in this image anyway. 
overlay an image. So the, you can turn off the ASCII art or turn it on. Mine's already got ASCII art on. Copy all of this out. Just click in the box. You have to copy it all anyway. You can't just copy part of it. I want the, the text editor. What I normally do, I normally make some space. And I like to paste it up here so I'm not impacting on the thing. And we see, we see that's got the same code name as that. So we can get rid of this one. Make sure I take out that braces there. And we need to copy the same code. You want Arduino closed, make sure you've got Arduino closed when you're doing this because that can impact on it. It's got to put it opens up this file in Arduino and you don't want that. Have a quick check. I don't know why it's keeping the ASCII art on. Is it keeping the ASCII art on? Yes, it is. For some reason, it's keeping my ASCII art on. Okay. Now, last time I did this, I needed end commas, a comma here and a comma here. But you want to save that. Save as. Make sure you're in the right folder in the Marlin folder. Save as underscore status screen dot h. I won't save mine because I have mine already saved. Let me have a look at my my one anyway. We want to copy and paste that code in this section and in this section. Oops, I've got that. See, we've got uh, a number one there and a zero up here. So you do have different screens. I'm not sure why that is. It might be to do with animation. I'm not sure. I'm only learning this to a certain extent myself, giving, giving you the basics here. But I want to save that. Let me open up my one that I've got already. Marlon, save the screen. Oh no, I haven't got end. Uh, I haven't got end commas in there. I thought I was thinking I had it. When you come to compile this, if you do get errors, it's probably because there is a comma missing or something like that. See, this is the ASCII art, which gives us an idea of what it should look like. We can turn it on and off. Let's close that. Oh. Let's close this. And then you want your printer plugging in, obviously. You need to go into configuration.h, scroll down. See, we have already got a boot, custom boot screen on mine, that's defined. But this, this will come in, well, this one, We'll come in commented like that. Take the two comment markers out and then upload it to the printer. So that's custom status screen. I won't do this because I've already done mine. And basically that should show you the status screen after it's booted up. Now, as I say, if Arduino does come back with any errors, it's probably because there's a comma missing. Or there's too many commas in the code. So, check carefully. And which positions those are in. Let me just watch this a few more seconds.